Last week, the NHL reached a tentative settlement with more than 300 former hockey players in a lawsuit over concussions. Each player would receive about $22,000 U.S. if they opt in. But here's the catch. The league will make the payouts without acknowledging any liability. My next guest says this lawsuit will do little to protect players today. So is it time to change the rules? And why are organizations like the NHL apparently so reluctant to do so? Ken Dryden is an NHL Hall of Fame goaltender, former Liberal MP, and author of Game Change, The Life and death of Steve Montador and the future of hockey, a book that chronicles the prevalence and impact of concussions in hockey. Hi, Mr. Dryden. Great to have you on the show. Really nice to see you. Thanks, Fashi. You wrote this weekend that lawsuits are not the best way to resolve the issue of concussions in hockey. Why did you say that? Because essentially lawsuits um, are about settling the past and, and they, may, they may or may not work well for that. But really the question is the game that's on the ice now and the game that will be on the ice in the future. And, and so it's, it's the game that will reduce the possibilities of concussions. That's really what I want to talk about. And that's what I try to talk about in the book and in the hearings that begin in Ottawa tomorrow. That's what I'll be speaking about. Do you see any willingness on the part of professional sports organizations to take up that role? Mm -hmm. Well, it depends. I mean, uh, each sport is different. Um, I think there's, there's usually a, a predictable path and where um, that there's, at first there's, there's uh, either um, a, a lack of recognition of a problem, then there's a denial of a problem, then there's a disputing a problem, then there's, um, and, and whether the question is tobacco or climate change or lead or asbestos, that's the usual pattern that, that is followed. And then the question at the end becomes um, then what? I mean, if, if in fact a decision maker decides not to make the best decision available uh, um, uh, on, on, on the best available information, the best available scientific information, then what do you do? And so that's where I think government hearings come in because then, then in fact you have the opportunity to tell the story from the athlete's point of view what are the life effects of these concussions, not just in terms of what the performance effect is. You have a chance to listen to the scientists, scientists and the researchers, what they know and what they don't know. And then you have a chance to talk to the sports decision makers in, in whatever the sport is and saying, you know, here you've got this problem, you can hear it in the, in the stories of the athletes, you see what science can do but can't do, now it is in your hands. How can you What's your game plan for your game going into the future to make it just as exciting to play and to watch, but less dangerous? So is it incumbent on the government then? Because I know you're testifying before this committee. Are you saying that there is a role for government in, in forcing that discussion along? I think that, I think that what government can do, it, it, you know the limitations of trying to interview somebody on a question like this. And anybody who is fairly adept can, um, can, can dance around uh, answering the question. And, and you've only got five minutes or seven minutes and, 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 and so you can avoid answering the question. There are two instances that I'm aware of where in fact it's harder to dance and avoid. And one is in terms of court proceedings when you're actually in a court or, or you are in depositions or when you have government hearings and where you are there, the questions, you know, that you're there for some period of time and it's just that much harder to avoid answering the question. So I think that's the role, what, what government can do, can take themselves, the committee members, but also in terms of a public through the sequence of the story. Oftentimes what is forgotten in the whole thing is the athletes themselves and the life effects. This isn't about somebody just di disappearing from your TV screen for 10 days or two weeks. This is what it's like to live with depression, anxiety, memory problems, uh, problems of dealing with anger, problems of, of dealing with even fairly basic uh, questions, uh, let alone things like CTE or other neurological conditions. And so it is to you know, confront people, this, this is what is happening. And so then what do you do? You are not just the custodians of your game, you're the custodians of those who play your game. So what, are you, what is your game plan? 
what are you going to do into the future? Do those questions uh, need to be posed and the answers compelled in the, in the fashion that you've described only a committee can do from someone like Gary Bettman? That, that's right. I mean, uh, otherwise, I mean, that, as you know, decision makers can avoid answering questions almost forever. And they will create their own industry of people uh, to deflect, to avoid, uh, to distract. Uh, and meanwhile, games are being played, players are being injured. And as I say, you know, in, in things that I've written, is that, is that lots of things aren't fair and aren't right, but it's when they're not necessary. That's really, and, and, and action isn't taken, that's what really is, is inexcusable. And there are, there are absolute answers and doable answers uh, in our games, again, to make them just as exciting to play and watch, but less dangerous. Mr. Bettman had shown so little, um, you know, such little pro proclivity to actually do something about this issue or acknowledge the, the connection, I guess, between the NHL and, and what's going on. Uh, do you think that he would appear before a committee or, or would, the, would you expect the committee to have some sort of power to compel him to? Well, I think that I think a couple of things is that is that one, I would expect that Gary Bettman would be invited Two. Um, uh, I think that, that if, if, if the government of Canada is engaging in committee hearings uh, about uh, a game that is very close to the heart of Canadians, that I think that somebody who is asked to be a witness, it would be very, very, not only difficult, but inappropriate not to appear. And so, you know, there's no subpoena power or anything like that. But I just can't imagine somebody not being willing to appear. And so, uh, you know, we'll see what happens down the line. But again, the question is, is that in advance of that kind of questioning, it is what is the athlete's story? Mm -hmm. what, are, you know, what are the life effects that they are feeling and the extent to which science is the answer or helmets are, are the answer? And in both instances, they are very limited answers. And so it gets into the games themselves, whether it's rugby or lacrosse or football or hockey or whatever the game happens to be. And games change constantly over time. I mean, one of, the, one of my favorite stories in terms of hockey is how for the first 54 years of hockey, from when it began in 1875 in, in, at, in Montreal to 1929, you could not pass the puck forward you could only pass it backwards because it was a game that was started by rugby players. Now, it's, it's hard to imagine this game today where you couldn't make a forward pass. Changes are happening all the time. The game is being played better and better all the time by more and more skilled players who, you know, who, who need every bit of their capacity, their, their, the dexterity of their hands, the creativity of their minds, the speed of their feet in order to play this game. And you can't give up any part of that. Uh, and, and one of that is you need the full capacity of your brain to play the game that is on the ice now and all any of your viewers need to do is go into a local community rink and watch 10-year-olds and 12-year-olds and 13-year-olds, and they are the next wave, and they are going to supersede even what those players are able to do on NHL ice rinks now. Okay, thanks very much for your time, Mr. Dryden. Thanks a lot, Vassie.